today I'm working on the Jetta. What I'm going to be doing is changing the fuel filter, the spark plugs, and doing a compression test. And uh, I'm going to try to side gap them and index the plugs as well and show you how to do all that. So let's get started. They do make a fancy coil puller. I think you could find it on uh, ECS tuning or something like that, but you know, I'm old school. I do things the hard way. All right, now we pull the plugs out. This is a side note ahead of time, I'm going to go to put these back in. I don't do any kind of torque specs. I don't know what they are. All I know is I put them in finger tight and I've slung them up probably, I don't know, a full turn or two, it depends. There's a lot of things that I always go with torque specs to the T. Spark plugs is not one of them. Sorry if there's some wind noise. I'm not a professional and there is no editing going into this video. By the way, my spark plug socket doesn't have the rubber grommet in anymore, so I uh, loosen them all up and I pull them out with the coils. <laughs> I shouldn't even be showing you guys this. Everyone knows how to pull spark plugs out, right? Okay, let me go ahead and pause this video. Get the boring stuff out of the way. Now I pulled the first spark plug out. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm going to try to show the color. I mean, it looks pretty good. A little bit of a, a grayish color. It's how they've always been looking since it's been tuned. Runs great. So, yeah. Alright. Alright, now all the spark plugs are out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the new spark plugs and I'm going to side gap them. So if you don't already know what that is, I'm basically going to take half of the um, the ground strap here. I'm going to trim it back a little bit to where it's not actually covering the uh, piece in the center. I always forget. Diode. Whatever. So um, it's supposed to be like uh, better for the turbulence inside the chamber. Um, maybe allowing for a better burn of all the oxygen and fuel. It's just one of those old tricks. I do it sometimes. Uh, you don't really notice a difference, but 
I always feel like every little bit counts, right? So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get that set up. All right, I got my Dremel or rotary tool all set up. Just got a little cutting disc on there. And I'm going to trim it back a little bit. See if I can try to get it on there for you. Hopefully that wasn't blurry. So we got the ground strap cut back a little bit. And I'm gonna clean it up with a little wire wheel uh, attachment and uh, regap it, 0 0.044. Not bad. All right, now I uh, put a uh, permanent marker on the top of the porcelain right here. So when you look down into the cylinder, you can see the orientation and it's lined up with the ground strap. Because essentially what a lot of the guys do is have the opening facing the exhaust side, exhaust, uh, exhaust valves. So when the ignition happens, you know, the explosion goes outward and there's no turbulence to go around the ground strap. Um, and I already pre-gapped it, 0 0.044, the maximum on the NA setup. So you can tell it looks pretty clean. Let's go put them in. Right. Before I put them in, I'm doing a compression test. So I'm gonna show what each of my cylinders show so far. The car has about 154,000 miles on it with a whole lot of hard driving. So uh, we'll see what the cylinders look like. Now, before I just go ahead and start the compression test, I wanted to do a little side note. Um, normally this is just a little copper bit right here and it's about that long. And it fits into the uh, spark plug hole just fine, but as you can see, it wouldn't be as long as a spark plug at all. Um, so I kind of wanted the fitting to be in the cylinder, uh, in the chamber, like the spark plug would be. So I put these on there. So I can get this done thing to focus. So I put this fitting on there to where it's more like the spark plug more replicate where it's actually going to be sitting. I don't know if it even matters, but if you're going to do this, I uh, put, I think, a 9 16 wrench on here and tighten the hell out of it so it doesn't come loose in there because if this comes loose and stays in the spark plug hole, it's going to be an absolute nightmare to take out. It happened to me before. All right. We got the... Uh Compression tester in the hole, nice and snug, and everything's ready to go. So we're going to test out cylinder number one. bad. About 173 on cylinder number one. It's actually not bad. We're gonna go to cylinder number two. All right, here's cylinder number two. It's not good. 
baby's getting tired. All right, let's check cylinder number three. And now cylinder number three. I was actually putting these in there to block the leaves from falling in, but I should probably take them back out. A 169, not bad. It's not bad. On to cylinder number four. All right. or no 165 not bad 165 now we're gonna check cylinder number three or five <laughs> cylinder number five all right cylinder number five as well about 150 150 good thing I got a spare motor oh, I have to correct myself this extension I put on the end of the uh, compression tester is actually 17 millimeter now to reinstall the plugs uh, if you are going to index them which means facing them towards or away from the exhaust valves um, typically, you're going to need some uh, spark plug spacers or indexing washers. Um, so what it does is there's like three different sizes in here. And within these little instructions, it shows which color actually rotates the spark plug a certain degree. And it's got it all right here. I got this from, uh, I think I got this from Summit Racing, but it's Moroso brand. Um, but either way, it's all right there, a part number, website, all that good stuff. And it comes in pretty handy if you want to do this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and index them, get them all in there, get them all snugged up, and uh, start the car. All right, everything's in, indexed, tight. Uh, I'm going to start the car up. Everything's going to be fine, I'm sure. And then I'm going to rotate the car around so I can jack it up and do the fuel filter. All right, now, when doing the fuel filter, before you take it off, you have to relieve the fuel pressure. Some people say you just gotta open up your gas tank. Well, I do that, but the other thing you're really supposed to do is relieve the pressure at the fuel rail with the Schrader valve. And it's super easy. It is right here at the end of the fuel rail. You take the cap off. 
and then you're probably best off using some kind of eye protection. I lost my uh, eye protection and I'm too lazy to go buy another pair. So I'm just gonna go ahead and be careful. And you just uh, push a screwdriver into this little valve right here. It relieves some fuel, fuel will spray out. So I just do this to kind of protect stuff from getting soaked in the gas. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna try to do that real quick. Without making too much of a mess. Hopefully, I never done this with one hand before. Woo. On the grill. It's a cheap grill too, so hopefully it doesn't like, you know, ruin it. Anyway. After the little burst, there's usually just a small runoff. I just keep it going until it looks like nothing else is coming out. That should be good. And then, you take off the filter. Now, after everything's done, find a safe place for this. After the uh, filter is swapped out and everything's buttoned up, all you gotta do is just put the cap back on the Schrader valve and uh, start the car. That's really it. So we're gonna get down here, see if I can actually film this part. All right, so. Now I'm going to use a Phillips to undo the clamp on the fuel filter right here. Now there's three lines. There's two going in and uh, one going out towards the front of the car. These clamps, if you haven't done this by yourself already, uh, there's a little, like a rectangular slot that you see at the end of the clip, and what you do is you push that in, like halfway, and it unlocks it. And I think one or two of these actually have to be done from the top, so it's a little tricky. I actually haven't done mine in quite a while. I usually remove this, well not remove it, but this um, e-brake cable, I try to get it out of the way somehow. I forget what I usually do with it. Maybe it's just a hook. I don't know. Being real pain. These come in handy, these little picks and hooks. Man. Don't want to go back in. Been a while since I had a fight with these. Honestly, I hate doing the fuel filter, but it's overdue. We'll go ahead and pause the video till I can actually get these off, but I will show you. If you can see that uh, you have to push in these little clips, they 
they disconnect from inside and then uh, you just pull it out once you push the clips in. This one over here has to be done from the top. And uh, once you get them off, you slide the filter out and uh, keep your eyes clear with or without safety protection. And once you get the new fuel filter, like this one here, you just slide the lines on. You just slide them on, they, they clip instantly, and you gotta make sure that you have a uh, four bar fuel filter like that. So I'll resume once it's swapped out. And there you have it. All buttoned up nice and tight. All the connections are 100%. Clamp is tightened, the e-brake cable hook thing is hooked back up. So yeah, the fuel coming out of this one was pretty dirty. As you can see here, it's it turning to brown, or it turning to the rag brown. So yeah, definitely overdue. All right, now I'm gonna start the car up after it gets back on the ground and drive it. I'm not gonna feel any difference, but you know, it's an excuse.